first I have to say that I'm glad that you say that, that the film is wild for the viewers, because if it was only wild for me, I think <laughs> I was being selfish. So I want to share the, this wild thing. Um, about the process, you know, uh, in the beginning of making a film, normally we try to get to raise money. And in fact, this was so strange, this, uh, the way we made the film, because normally you have to submit a screenplay, and then, then they give you the money. And this time we submit a screenplay, so this was the process, we submit a screenplay that we were saying we are never going to shoot this. This is only like a demonstration it's like a simulation of uh, what we, we are going to do because we, for two months or three months, we uh, read newspapers every morning and then we uh, selected 150 articles and from that we imagined stories for Sherazad, for the Queen of Arabian Nights. 1001 nights and then we wrote a script we submitted saying we are not going to shoot any scene here but this is a demonstration how we can from with these uh, 150 articles we have here we can uh, invent stories tales for Sherazan but we are going to do this not for three months but now we are going to do this for one year and uh, and so I explained the process that we would have a team of three journalists researching for us and that we, tr we were going to try, we, it's me and two other persons that write with me stories, we tr would try to uh, react to reality, to whatever the journalists would bring us. Uh, writing stories and then we try to film these stories as soon as possible and then we restarted the process trying to do as many stories as possible and so it was very crazy because uh, first the producer could not make a budget because he, he, he would not know what kind of stories we would, would uh, have to, to do if it, if it was like with two actors in a, in a house or if it was with uh, 100 uh, people or 1,000 people in a war, we didn't know. So it costs uh, less two people in a house than 100 people at war. So, and we had this time of one year to make the film. When uh, uh, we get, got to the end, the money went out, it finished, and so we passed to the editing. And then at that moment, I found out that I have uh, three films. It's a film, but it has three volumes, three films, which each one of them has their kind of own personality, their own soul. And I've seen that in the editing room, and so we organized this uh, strange version, Portuguese version of Arabian Nights, uh, by uh, uh, trying to uh, have this kind of uh, three films, that is one film, and it's about Portugal, and it's about uh, telling stories. No, I think that uh, if you ask me if there is one I prefer personally, yes, there is. And we made that. It's, it's like uh, uh, every one of us that worked in the film, we, in the end, we had our, there were people that were like uh, from, from, uh, uh, liking more to liking less, there were like uh, two, three, one, there was one, three, two, there was, it looked like a, a soccer, a football 
uh, tactic, uh, you know. Uh, myself, I'm a three to one. I prefer three, then second, then first. But I don't know if I see the film in different days, I will say the same thing. Because for me, what was most important was that uh, I think that the fact that even if there are things that I can be less, a little bit less attached, I think that the good thing is this diversity in the film. The fact that uh, we go to many ways of making cinema and telling stories and that every episode in a way is talking with the others. So, um, and sometimes even contradicting other episodes. So there are very different um, uh, approaches of cinema and uh, storytelling and also about looking the society with different classes, uh, social classes, with different kind of characters. And for me, this diversity was very important. I could not, in the end, uh, uh, do just like a best of, you know, like uh, choose what I like more and make uh, one film. Because I, I, I think that to be honest to the process of making the film, that the true film was this. Even if there are stories that maybe are much more fragile or uh, I think this is important to have all of them and so in the end we have put it all of them we have cut it, uh, lots of scenes in uh, these episodes but we have all the stories that we have made I, I, I have this idea I sometimes I have these theories but uh, I don't <laughs> think you should take very seriously my theories yeah. but uh, I don't take them at least but this theory was that to for things to be it interesting you normally you have to have at the same time two different things and sometimes very opposite like uh, yeah in electricity you have to have negative pole and uh, positive pole and then there's charge, electrical charge because uh, there is something happening in this uh, tension between one thing and the other that look like opposites and uh, and for me this is also important from a point of view of, of, of viewer of cinema I mean if you're playing always the same note in the piano uh, yeah, I think it's less rich I mean it's uh, it can be very co coherent, very, but it doesn't Not have any tension because... But if you're seeing something that, for instance, can be at the same time moving at a very emotional, uh, emotional level and also very ironic, you have two things that are clashing. And in this clash, the viewer can be more free to approach one or the other, or to, or to have both, and uh, and so it invents a space where the viewer can be a little bit more active than just seeing something that is saying uh, in a very uh, uh, straight way. Straight way, only one thing. You then you just are you are just passive and listening, and if you have this contrast, you are more active and for me this is uh, important. I think for me it happens in uh, in uh, most... Uh, Coins maybe? Yeah, and, uh, from the beginning of cinema, from <laughs> Murnau and, uh, and uh, <coughs> it, I mean it exists on, in um, Rossellini and it exists in Zurlini that makes very different films from Rossellini uh, it existed a little bit I'm going to say something that maybe it's not very polite but I think it exists a little bit less in, in Fellini and this is why Fellini doesn't uh, interest me so much as Rossellini or even Zurlini I mean, we could okay. be, yeah. we, we could 
you know, be like crazy people and do this graphic of the, the, this theory of the opposites in every filmmaker, if, uh, if what they are working as contrast and some of them have a very wide range and some don't. But uh, I don't know if we should take this theory so seriously. <laughs>
If I want to do a science yeah. fiction movie? Even outside Portugal. In a way, I think I'm making a science fiction movie every time, but uh, now I didn't. I wanted to do a film many years ago, which was a science fiction film. But, and I told this, it was very really in the beginning, before making the first feature. So no one took me seriously. And uh, I talked to this with a producer, a very well-known producer in Portugal, not mine. At that moment, it was not mine. And he told me uh, that I was crazy. <laughs> And so I gave up with this idea. And uh, but now I'm going to do. I think that my next film, I guess, it will it will be a, a film, a kind of film that I never thought I would do. I think it much more the idea of making a science fiction film looks much more uh, possible than this kind of film that I have. I am going to do which in a strange way it will be a war film and I never thought about making a war film but I cannot talk a lot about this because my producer said to me that I could not. Per favore, piccola, piccola, piccola. Velocissima, velocissima.